All right, hello everybody. This time around we're going to be talking about the Dumble. So if you saw my previous video on the basement, I just went through and troubleshot that and did some generic you know, looking at it, and it looked like it works actually quite well. So I'm not sure what they reported was the problem. Uh, I don't really need to fix anything, sadly. <laughs> so I didn't get to learn anything extra there, but that's fine. Uh, we all got to see at least and learn from the general uh, process, I hope, about how uh, troubleshooting an amp can be done and, and should be done to figure out where things are working and aren't. So. Uh, at any rate, um, now we're going to gut that amp and build a dumble inside of it. So this is just a short intro video that will explain the amp schematic topology and what uh, is so, so nice about these amps. But uh, So we'll first just kind of start with the input section here. One of the, the interesting things that will be a learning process for me is that we're using a, um, a FET input. I'm using an NTE452, which is a type of, I believe it's a germanium FET that's new being built right now by NTE. Uh, but I've got that, and I'm going to be putting into this uh, into a small bore that will then lead into the normal channel, so that you can uh, choose the FET, which is kind of like a small preamp boosting signal boosting part of this. That then goes into the first triode. Nothing too fancy about the first triode; it's a very typical gain stage with a 12AX7. But then that goes into the tone stack. Part of the tone stack that's interesting and, and quite cool is that he uses a um, a couple of switches in here. We have a typical bright switch, but we also have a rock jazz switch that adjusts the pathing through um, uh, a slightly different path through the system. Uh, and then we also have a preamp uh, boost, which is on a relay only, but it allows you to turn on and off the preamp. Um, I think, I'm trying to remember, but I think the preamp boost might actually just kind of bypass the tone stack and send it straight through so you get a lot more boost, but you don't have as much tone shaping. Uh, and then uh, it goes through, uh, uh, there's also a deep switch that engages or disengages a small um, uh, additional tone shaping characteristic of a 0 0.1 microfarad to ground with a 1 meg and a 10k uh, in, in through that as you can see allows a little bit more uh, filtering of some specific frequencies to give it a little bit deeper response. Uh, then the, this goes into the next stage where he's also set up a it's about a 20 meg but he's got two 10 megs in series and then a 0 0.05 microfarad uh, local negative feedback. Similarly to what was done on the Tweedledee Deluxe, if you've watched that video series, there's another one here that does the same kind of a thing. That then outputs into an OD overdrive relay, which allows you uh, um, to also choose to engage or disengage an overdrive, which we'll cover in a second, but then it also has a main master volume, which could go through as well, through a send and return, and then off to the phase inverter. So it either directly goes to this, or it goes through the overdrive and then back into that same thing. So you, you're kind of just choosing to short circuit it here at that switch. Uh, additionally, the overdrive itself has a small on-the-board trimmer that allows you to adjust how much overdrive you're going to be giving. So you probably, you know, max out the overdrive and then tune that for the specific player if they might want a little less drive at max. You can dial it down a little bit. Then there's also a ratio, which is just kind of a mixing of normal clean tone and the overdrive tone. Um, so uh, then from there. Uh, we also come down to the power section. We have a phase inverter balancing resistor here. It's a little bit the opposite of the way it was in the Tweedledee Deluxe. It, the Tweedledee Deluxe had one down here in this cathode and where it kind of adjusted how much of each side of the phase inverter got um, output. And it was a cathodyne, whereas this is a more standardized um, phase inverter where half of the signal comes out of this anode, the other half comes out of this anode, and the signal itself kind of bleeds through the cathode of this side over to this one, but as uh, the same phase instead of the opposite phase. Uh, whereas the, in the Tweedly Deluxe, it was a single tube that was doing the balancing. Uh, then that goes into a typical um, 4606 output stage, but there is a switch in it that goes and, and lifts the ground of two of the tubes into two 10K resistors to some diodes so that they'll light the diodes when they're disabled. Uh, and it, uh, basically, it still allows grounding, but it cuts, puts them to a cutoff state. So the tube itself is still getting power, but doing basically nothing other than lighting the LEDs on the grounds. Uh, and then the other important parts here really would be as well, we've got the power filtering section. This is going to be a little more complicated as well. You see a separate transformer goes in through a voltage doubler and into an LM7812 uh, voltage regulator to give us power for the relays. Uh, and then that is sent also down through, there's either some manual switching here or off to the foot switch itself to control the relays. Uh, as you can see up here. So the the interesting and challenging things we'll have with this build are that I'm doing some solid state work I've never done before with a preamp boost and with these relays. So that will be an exciting, interesting learning process for me and hopefully for everyone else. Uh, also, I didn't notice there's, or didn't note before, there's a presence pot on this as well as here's the power filtering. We've got um, the main power filtering coming into um, this 
two 300 microfarad 350 volt radials that are in line to create 150 at six, at 700 volts. Uh, I know that the amp's max power output is about 400 and some volts, so I bought instead a 150 microfarad at 500 volt capacitor that I'll be able to put in the same place, and I'll still have this load down resistor. These resistors do kind of do dual purpose. They uh, allow when the amp is off the capacitors to drain slowly but consistently out so you don't have build up of power and reducing the risk of damage to somebody touching inside of it when it's been off. But they also allow loading of the capacitor a little slower so that there's a it won't spike the capacitor super hard when it first turned on and it kind of allows a slow light path to ground if need be but the capacitor then charges up. So uh, that is the schematic uh, that is uh, obviously if anybody has any questions please let me know um, we one of the things that I'm still I would say only gray not completely clear on is some of the way some of this interaction works with the rock jazz switch uh, that's something I've been trying to completely understand myself as well but uh, if somebody wants to chime in and explain that I could probably put that into another video in more detail but uh, it is a very cool design so the next step we'll look at is the layout as I mentioned, instead of two here of these filter capacitors, I'm going to be having one. I also, if you saw my recent video where I showed how to build the boards, I found it after I built the boards that I was looking at the wrong boards. The only board that is correct, really, it looks like, is this main uh, board here. But the um, FET is actually wrong, as are these two power supply boards. And I'm guessing that that overdrive that those were for is for a later version, uh, and one of the other versions that was maybe built in a later time frame, not this one, number 124. So sadly, I will have to be rebuilding these boards and the FET board, but the main board is done and working. So, um, But we'll skip that since you guys have all seen how that works. You can see the main power transformer, the secondary transformer that provides the power for this voltage regulator, and then off to the relays and all the control and, and whatnot. Another thing I'll be doing is uh, Dumble has some specific Radio Shack or Tandy brand, which is Radio Shack um, foam filled, uh, I think it's like RG59 coax for this. I bought some RG59, but it's not that brand, but it's a, it is a nice, much thicker shielded insulated style than the standard ones that I've used in a lot of other builds. So it's going to be interesting to see how that works out. But he used it in several places, especially related to the drive to guarantee a cleaner, um, noisy noiseless signal path since the overdrive is the most sensitive part of that path and i'll be reproducing that as well uh, i do sometimes tend to uh, veer away a little bit from some of these designs because i've always liked uh, being a little bit uh, unique in the way i do things but i also am trying to construct the circuit itself identically uh, so i might not put a particular thing in the exact same place as it was put in this original design but i do do it uh, to the exact same schematic and layout as best i can I'm sorry, the exact same schematic as best I can. So at any rate, if anybody has any questions, please do post them in the comments below. I would love you guys to subscribe if this is a kind of channel that looks interesting to you and give me a thumbs up. Uh, anything, any other questions you have, please do fire them away. Thanks.